Yeah, I probably should have focused the Ryan with Cassidy. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah. There, there will be times where you, it's very 50-50, right? Because Ryan is too far forward in comparison to his team. What do you think this Bastion, this Ana, and this Reaper is going to do? Well, they're, they see me, they're probably going to focus me. Right, they're going to pop turret, they're going to blow nade, they're going to blow sleep, they're going to try and shoot you, right? So what does that mean for the poor Reinhardt? He won't have anything to help him so afterwards. So I wonder if what you're doing now is the better play. The only question is, can you survive it? And the answer is yes, if you, what? If I use my DM properly. If you use your DM properly, sit there with your fat, stupid three seconds of Matrix, and then even just duck behind the corner afterwards. Let's see. Yeah, he's at all. I think you've done a really good job. Look at this, look at this. Sleep, nade, bam, eaten. And this on is one HP. And you've eaten all the turret. And this re look at, look at, they're in no position to follow up either. Do you see that? Now, as long as you can survive, you don't even need to get the kill here now. As long as we can bomb this and survive this, you're good to go. Um, you did a great job here. I mean, look at look at what's happening in the kill feed. You get the res. Ryan's isolated again. Reaper dies. And you've survived. Or you should have survived. This right. is great diva play. This is great. You've ate all the new cooldowns, no follow-up, forced the nano, prevented the follow-up on the shatter, and the Ryan and Reaper died anyway. Hey guys, this is an in-depth diva guide. We're going to be talking about positioning, the game of whack-a-mole, how to pressure, how to peel, and why avoiding frontline usually is the answer when playing diva. Also, how to play up against some matchups that are kind of tough. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, please, and consider supporting me by subscribing to my Patreon, link in the description, or subscribing to my YouTube channel. Enjoy the video, and let me know if you have any questions. As I said, have a wonderful day. Um, what is diva good at? Uh, diva is good at responding to different sides of the field, controlling high ground. Right. Um, can, I, can I stop you right there? Responding to different sides of the field, what do you mean by that? So, there's a there's a clip by Emong back in Overwatch one days where he's on Gibraltar and he's like, your job as diva is go to the front line, peel for the back line, go back to the front line, get, a, get the pick, peel for your tank, peel for your support. I'm doing all this at once and it's kind of like a joke, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like it's kind of that thing, right? I'm yeah. not, I'm not sitting on the front line like a Reinhardt. I'm, I'm seeing someone is isolated over here. I I put pressure on them. Hopefully, kill them. Uh, someone's aggressing my supports. I come back and peel for them, and my mobility lets me um, respond very quickly, so long as I'm aware of what's going on. Sure. Let's see if this link works. Check your Discord. Do you see that game? <laughs> Yes. That's D.Va. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Every single time one of those stupid heads pops up, you have to be there to smack it right in the face. And the reason why that's so important is because you have the mobility to do that and to do that quickly. There are not many heroes in the game that you cannot beat in a 1v1. There are not many heroes in the game that you can't punish hard, even some tanks, right? But if you overextend and try and punish something that's not really playing aggressively or is not really killable by you, you lose a lot of resource doing that. And not only that, but you do it unnecessarily because they're not really a threat to your team. Your job as Diva is to find the balance between I'm either setting up kills for myself by pressuring the enemy team or preventing the enemy team from getting kills and pressure on my team by deciding who is most aggressive, who's got their stupid whack-a-mole head stuck up and smacking them on the noggin. Because either they die or they back up and they give up that position, right? And both of those are victories for you and your team. And what makes D.Va so good at that is not only because, as I said, you're very good at the 1v1s. There's a lot of tanks that are good at the 1v1s. It's with how frequently you have your boosters. Every four seconds, you can be in a different location. And if you're not leveraging that as D.Va, you're probably not playing the hero correctly. Does that make sense? Yep. So everything comes back to whack-a-mole as D.Va. Whack-a-mole, 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 okay? Now, let me ask you a question. How good are you at 1v1ing Arissa? Um... Not really like a a one v one ideal matchup. She just has so much armor sure. that it takes a lot to burst through her. If she's if she's like down to half health, then obviously I can. Sure, but that's an opportunity. That's the off. whack a mole, right? That's the whack a mole. Right. That's the other thing about whack a mole. Even if somebody's not aggressive, if they're low, you see an opportunity to do something just to get a kill. Go for it. It could be you being the aggressive one here. It's not. It's not completely black or white. So 
look for opportunities to make a decision. Now, right now, you can already see who is playing too aggressively on the enemy team right now. Not even too aggressively. Who is playing aggressively? Soldier. Soldier. Who else is playing probably a little too aggressively right now? Um, maybe Junkrat. Why? He's just he's with his Arissa though, right? He's with his Arissa, but he's really far forward, and like it's it's like a matter of looking one pixel left to yes. like pressure him. Right. And Diva's really good against spam, so I can just eat up right. all of his That's damage. That's the thing. Is he's right next to his Arissa, but also he's right next to his Arissa. He's 200 HP. Arissa's 7,000 HP, right? So if you have to pick and choose which one that you're better versus, which one can you threaten to kill on more, which one can you eat the spam more, which one's more lethal, there's your decision right here. Now, the only, only other thing that you have to consider, and this is the perfect marriage between playing whack-a-mole and not just completely getting your he own head smacked in is what defines aggression how do we know that this junk rat is playing too aggressively let me ask you a really stupid question is this Arissa playing too aggressively right now or this junk rat playing too aggressively right now um that is really far forward for an Arissa and yes also a junk rat because <clears throat> they're really far from the corner that they would like to be at to use for a natural cover okay but you're wrong. You don't want to know why? Why? Because we're in spawn. We can't punish okay. them for being there. Okay? So let me ask you a question. Is this soldier or a drunk rat feeding? Now. Um, Probably not now. He's pretty close to the corner. You can use his mind to what jump about, away. What about the junk rat? Screw cover. For, stop thinking about cover for a split second. Look, about where, okay. look at where your team is. Okay? Is your team in any position to punish this junk rat for where he is? No. No, it's not. So aggression feeding the whole game of whack-a-mole is completely reliant on where your team is in a position to punish. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Technically, this Ana is standing out in the open, but nobody cares because your team isn't in any position to punish that. So your right, don't of, right, right. So your game of whack-a-mole is con completely reliant on your ability to recognize where the enemies are too aggressive in relation to your team. Not just you, because you could be anywhere you want, but your team. Because if you go flying in here, the soldiers feeding guys, right, while your team is like way over here, who do you think is actually feeding? That would be me. That would be you, right? I, I definitely need to like be staying where my Ana can see me, for right. instance. Well, sometimes you can break the rule, but you got to at least know the rule so you know when to break it or know when to bend it, right? So that right. to me is so important. You, you don't always need to be turning around, but you do need to have a good awareness of bef right, at least right before the fight starts of where my team is set up so you know who you need to punish, right? Right? That's very, very important. Okay. Let's, uh, for example, like if there's a tracer on a flank over here, you don't care until she's in a position to kill your backline. And how do you know when she's in a position to kill the backline? When you know where not only she is, but you know where your backline is. Do you see that? Right. And that's the number one skill you must have as D.Va. Number one. Nothing even comes close. Oh, okay. and that I, having your I'll mention wrong. this. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention this now. So in this game, Fulcrum and Kree are two of my friends. Mm-hmm. And so I have a lot of confidence in Fulcrum to, to keep me up, so I do play a little bit more aggressively because of that. Sure. So that's just something sure. to keep in mind. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. There's a, there's a, I mean, the aggression's fine. Do you think this Arissa is playing aggressively in relation to your team and her team? Um... Not necessarily, and you'll see in a second, I actually switch from her to the soldier right, pretty quickly. Right, but is soldier in a position to do anything aggressively? No. Not particularly. So let me ask you a question. Where should you be right now? Um, I mean, I don't necessarily, like, gut reaction have necessarily a problem with where I am. I'm in line of sight of Meana. Mercy's there. You could argue maybe I should take high ground, but that Why lets the Arissa... Ground? Well, <laughs> I was going to say that lets the Arissa rock between me and my team, and that's not good. Okay. Why is it not good? Um, it forces my backline to peel further back because they don't have anything in between them and the Arissa. But aren't you in position to go for their backline easier at the same time? Um, possibly. 
guess it depends. That's why you'd go here, right? So that you can avoid the Orisa entirely and, and go for backline, right? Maybe not kill them, yeah. but distract them, right? While Orisa is doing the same thing. But who do you think is better equipped to deal with backline and or get out? Diva. Diva, right? So it actually favors you to avoid the Orisa, take the high ground, make sure there's nobody in this team that's going aggressively, like we said, the whack -able. And then if there's nobody going aggressively, just keep pressure on them. Let your team deal with Orisa. Okay. It, I know it's tough, but that's what we have to think about. Yeah, and that might be a remnant of me being used to being an off tank in a two tank right. game. Right. You are helping your team by taking favorable 1v1s in this game of whack-a-mole, right? You are not taking a favorable 1v1 right now, and you're also contesting space to an extent a little early. Your team isn't really in a good position to follow up. You said you might Ana can see me, right? Mm -hmm. But you're not just relying on your Ana, are you? You're also relying on this guy. And he's not really in a good position to do a lot of good damage, is he? He's too, he's too far back, right? Let's look at your Mei. She's not doing anything, right? So right. this is best case scenario. Even if your Cassie's hitting shots, okay? This is a 4v5, right? Maybe even 3v5. Okay, so who wins this? Even if your Ana can see you. The 5 player the five. team. It's not that deep. And even right. with your Ana blowing her brains out on your, on, on your butt. Right? Right. Not that deep. She even had to use Nade on you, which she would like to have used on them. And funnily enough, look at that Orisa's HP. It's full. Shocking. 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 Not a favorable 1v1. That's the number one problem. Number two problem, you did it a little too early. You played the game of whack-a-mole. Even if you were to shoot the Orisa, right? Okay? You'd want to do it. Now, right? Because look at your mate. Look at your cast. He's right there. Right. Yep. Now we can trade on the Orisa. It wouldn't be optimal, but you could do it. So, okay. Let's uh, let's keep going. Whack-a-mole. Do you see it? Yeah, on the right. Yep, he's too aggressive. He's online with his Orisa. He's standing out in the open, and he's directly... And he's, if you think about your team's positioning, right? They're right there. This guy dies. Yep. Right? <laughs> I mean, there yep. it is. That's it. Yep. <laughs> That's D.Va right there. Other other tanks could definitely have done that, but nobody would have done it as well as D.Va. Nobody. Nobody. Full Matrix. Get out the, get out the safety. Good. Now, this is a little bit of whack-a-mole here, right? Who's, Arissa's playing too aggressive. What does too aggressive mean? Look at this Arissa. Look at this Arissa. Do you see anybody else on her team at all? Uh, in my line of sight, no, through no. the walls because no. of the player no. I can. No, no. So, so it, she's feeding, right? She's feeding. She's holding space that her team is like, uh, we're so we can't see past there. So guess what? She has to back off. And there you go. Easy peasy. Whack a mole, right? Mm -hmm. The only concern I have here is what? Um. Three, if you're two. if you're saying there's a specific concern here, I'm not sure, but in general, you were saying it needs to be a favorable one v one. Right. This is a favorable one v one, right? Right. But where's your on and Cass? Uh, they're back there. All right. Is this bad? Um, so long as I get the kill, no. I don't think so. I think it's okay. I can just get back to them. you. Do have your mate. You do have your mercy, and your Onacast will be here soon. My only concern was just to make sure that you're playing the game of Whack-A-Mole in front of where they could actually help you, right? Even if they can't help you on the target, they can shoot the Orisa who's not getting help now. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Now, who should you stop shooting right now? Uh, the Junkrat. The Junkrat. He is no longer a threat. So then what should you put your attention on? The Orisa. The Orisa's dead. Or the Ana's you, 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 Orisa you, you, died. You, you, yeah. you see this? You see this? How did the Orisa die? <laughs> right? Who killed the and Orisa? She, uh, looks like Cassidy and May work together it's on a, it. It's a, it's a trick question. It's a philosophical question. You killed the Orisa. Look at the Ana. Do you see? Oh, she's helping the Junkrat. Look at, look at the Kiriko. Look who she just used Suzu on. The Junkrat. Right, so who killed the Orisa? 
<laughs> right, uh, right. Me, I guess me, right? Yeah, you do. Remember when we talked about you taking high ground and zoning backline, and you're like, oh, well, what about the Arisa on my backline? Hmm. <laughs> right. It's not always going to end up like this. Like, maybe she's got ultimate, or, you know, maybe she plays it a little bit better mechanically. I don't know. But this is what I'm talking about, right? This is what D.Va does. You could take any 1v1 you want because of your mobility. It's not always easy, right? Otherwise, everyone would be top 500 with this hero. But this is what I'm talking about. Okay, now she's out. So what should your priority be right now? Whack-a-mole, right? Right. She, nade, sleep, healing, damage, not a threat. Who's your threat right now? Symmetra. Go back to Symmetra. Is Symmetra a favorable 1v1 for you? Um, I mean, it's not ideal because she's a beam and I can't DM beam, but mm. she's a squishy and yep. if she's alone, I can yep. kill her. Go kill her. So stop looking at Ana, go kill Symmetra. She's out. Don't over pursue. This is over pursuing. Why? Why is this over pursuing? Um, First off, your HP is a little bit of a concern. But right. where is your team right now? You know, you don't even have to turn around. You know where they are. They're they're around the cart ish. They're around the cart, right? Your May is with you, but they are. There is no help to be had from where you are right now. So I will be sh shocked if you don't back here and die. Well, color me tickled. You're saying? <laughs> Damn it! Worst thing in the history of the universe. You know, I wonder why this worked out. Wonder why this worked out. It must have been your May. Your May must have bailed you out. Ah, uh, you, that. Oh, and you're, you're also cast hit a shot. Oh my goodness, you're cast hit a shot from all the way over here. Holy man! Because yeah. I thought the junk was gonna be mech you, but you know, okay. Well, I guess I'm retiring. So, bad news. This coaching <laughs> session's over. Ah, yeah. oh, dang. Yeah, yeah. Good. You were right, but at what cost? Yes, this is how you kill Arissa. This is how you kill Arissa with what you're doing right now. The return on investment for pressuring Ana and forcing her cooldowns defensively and theoretically killing her is more than the DPS that you do to Arissa while she's fortified and, and javelin spinning and so on. Do you see this? Your Arissa's dying yeah. on your screen while you're diving the Ana. And there's just no risk with what you're doing either. Okay, excellent job. Really nice job. Chasing some staggers here. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, we got really aggressive here. <laughs> Okay, listen, th there is a time and a place where this can actually work. I just would be careful about blowing so many ultimates because you could keep them staggered and staggered and staggered and staggered. I'm just scared that I think they're, they're for sure going to get a recontest and you're not going to have an ult. I failed to save my May there. Uh, and, yeah, yep. tragic, tragic, tragic. Okay, not, not the end of the world. You did get a lot of good cart push, so maybe it's not the worst trade. Okay. Let's, uh, let's keep watching. By the way, is everything I'm saying making something of sort of a sense? Yes. Okay. And so. it's also doing the filtering out the noise because, like, for example, I was mentioning, well, if I go to the high ground, then the Arish is going to push in on my back line. As, and one of the things that I, that I hear is that as the solo tank, you do need to be the front line a bit, right? You can't oh, just that. That just makes me so angry. Makes me so <laughs> angry when I hear that. Right. You need to create space for your team, which may be helping them out when they get pushed on their space, which might mean peeling, right? Or mm -hmm. is pulling resources away from your team so that there's no follow-up on the Orisa. Because if the Orisa solo dives her team, but her soldier and Junkrat are not helping her, the chances of your backline dying are significantly lower, right? It's the same thing with a Winston jump. You can blow up a Winston, but if that Tracer has Pulse Bomb and there's a Sombra, if you focus the Winston and allow the Tracer and Sombra to do what they want to do, you're going to die to the Tracer Sombra, not to the Winston, right? More often than not. So you have to, again, look objectively at your hero. But yeah, the frontline stuff is just absolute, complete misinformation. It's bogus. Now, let me ask you a question. When would you theoretically frontline or play tank matchup focus as D.Va? Think about the 1v1 focus we talked about. If there's an opportunity? Sure, sure. If there's somebody low, right? Somebody way overextended on the front line. What about if their tank is on Reinhardt? Do you want a one v one or Reinhardt as Diva? Um, only if I can like stay out of his hammer range. Right, not not right. very good, right? What about a Winston? Would you front line one v one to Winston? Sure. Yeah. What about a Doomfist? Uh, I mean, yeah. Not bad, right? So you see what I'm saying? Like, there's a world where you can mark those tanks and match those tanks and take a favorable one v one with those tanks, right? But saying, "Oh, we have to frontline more as Winston," is just actively 
It's just stupid. It's, it's beyond stupid. So like this is a perfect example of why it's stupid right now, right? What would be the worst possible thing you could do right now? Be in front of the Reinhardt. Be in front of the Reinhardt, right? Let the Symmetra do what she wants. Let the Honored land every nade, every sleep. T- let the Kiriko flank. Let the Junkrat eventually will get there and drop into you and spam your backline. You, you will lose the HP trait. You will die, okay? You will do nothing. So then what's the best thing that you can do once your team takes a little bit of space and walks forward? What should you try and do? Um, I think it's what I actually end up doing here, which so is exciting. focus on the on the squishies here. Sure, sure. As long as you're playing the game of whack-a-mole, where your team can help, right? Even if your team just focuses the Ryan while you're focusing the squishies, that means that Ryan will probably get no shield because a cast May is better at dealing with a Ryan than you are. So let's see what happens. Your team is there. Okay, I love the little check there. That's really good. And even this, like for example. This, all of a sudden, focusing Ryan doesn't feel so bad because now you don't even have to worry about shield, right? So if you were to focus Ryan, now would be the time, right? I'm not saying you should, but even just coming at it from a different angle allows the bad 1v1 to not feel so bad. Do you see that? Um, right. Okay. This is this is good, though. This is good. Really good. Really, really nicely done. There's the Ana. There's the Kiriko. They're all focusing on you, and you still got the kill. Um it's a little bit of a high risk play because you did have to use your boosters and you are out in the open. So I would try and keep play my life, try and play my life. Yeah, this is great. This is great. Yes, 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 yes. I was so sure we were gonna go focus that Reinhardt, but you're like, no, no, Junkrat, whack-a-mole, right? Junkrat and Reinhardt on melee range, who's more dangerous, right? Junkrat, right? Not because Junkrat does more damage than Reinhardt melee range, but Junkrat's easier to remove than Reinhardt. Do you see that? Um, this is great. And you can also Matrix Junk, right? You can't Matrix Reinhardt as much. Now we go for Ryan, because he's low. Now we go back on Symmetra. I hate that ultimate so much. This is a this was a great fight from you. This you should be very, 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 very proud of this. This is really good. Now we focus Reinhardt. Why? He's alone. He's completely alone. He's way out of position. So there's sometimes where you will take an unfavorable 1v1 because it's not a 1v1, is it? It's a 5v1, <laughs> right? Um, the only thing here is just be careful that this Reaper doesn't come back because it's likely that's what he's going to do. It's the only problem I think I have. And there you go. But we go with the Reaper. Nice. 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 This is really good. Nice. You understand why that went so well, correct? Yeah. You took favorable 1v1 after favorable 1v1 on the more aggressive targets while, well, I say, while your team was doing something. Brilliant job. Makes sense, right? Why would we focus Reinhardt? Well, I mean... He's cut off by the May wall. I mean, not even and there's that. there's going on. There's literally nothing less. If there was a Symmetra over here, I would even consider diving the Symmetra and let your team deal with the Frozen Reinhardt, right? Or if there's an Ana over here or a Widow up here, I might even fly and take the 1v1. Because while everyone's trying to focus on healing the Reinhardt, maybe you go kill the Squishy, you know? Um, but obviously, there's nothing here. Oh, he gets Suzu. This is what we have to be careful about. Because <clears throat> it's not so much that, oh, Reinhardt was low, we went for the Reinhardt, that's bad. But use your... 2020 2020 vision uh you're, you're looking behind you okay so where's your cast where's your honor where's your mercy um i would guess they're somewhere around the point oh she's with you right oh oh, oh mercy oh 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 oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you see the problem here right so now yeah. from the enemy's perspective i'm coaching the enemy kiriko on a reinhardt whatever who's feeding now right Me. um right exactly 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 so this this should probably get you killed get you demacked force your bomb something along those lines yeah and there it is yeah and it's that simple right it's just a losing getting a little bit tunneled losing awareness of where our team can help and then we lose the fight as a result <clears throat> now this point up until later on the point will feel difficult with diva why well the the high ground is just so far away from the payload. Why is high ground good? We talked about it earlier. Why is it good? Uh, well, consider a Reinhardt is on the low ground. He literally can't do anything to be on the high ground. Right. Um, right. From a DPS perspective, if I'm a DPS and I'm on the high ground, I have a more a DPS, favorable so angle. Bad. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I'm being from, from a Diva's perspective, you know, I'm denying the enemy team that ah, high ground. Or see? providing the ally team that high ground. Sure, was, sure, sure. Yeah. Or you're just using it selfishly to take the 1v1s that you want to take without having to run to Reinhardt shield, right? Just like we saw on first point Havana, where you're able to use that shield to avoid, the, or the high ground to avoid the Orisa and go for backline. 
Um, make sense? <clears throat> okay, very flat, very difficult. And this is just honestly a little bit staggering. You were down two, down three, just just don't die. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of yeah. charge fed to the enemy DPS. <clears throat> Who should you focus right now? Um, I don't think I even saw the Kiriko here, but probably the Kiriko force out her TP. Possibly, possibly, yes. I wouldn't be angry if you focused the Reinhardt here, though, right? Even though it's an unfavorable 1v1, why? Because my DPS are there on the right to be able to also right. pressure him. Look at his position in relation to his team. He's really far forward. Right, right. He's by himself, essentially. Now, if he's playing with a Widowmaker covering him, he's not out of position because his Widowmaker is right there with him. She's just playing from further away. But look at Bastion. Right. Look at Ana. Look at Reaper. These heroes kind of want to be close, and they're not close. <laughs> so he's out of position. You fly behind him, shoot him in the back. Okay. Let's see what happens. Now we know why he's out of position because he's got Shatter. Let's uh, let's see if he gets a value out of it. Dude, this is all fine. And do you see? Do you see? He has to back up. He gets nervous. And but mm -hmm. while he's backing up, he's losing shield. Now this is pretty funny. You see wall on Ryan, and you go for backline. What do you think? You're not playing um, whack-a-mole here, though, right? I probably should have focused the Ryan with Cassidy. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah. There, there will be times where you. It's very fifty-fifty, right? Because Ryan is too far forward in comparison to his team. Mm -hmm. But is his backline necessarily as far away as they were earlier? Um, they are separated by a wall, but I guess they're not far. Right. They they could follow up here. What do you think this Bastion, this Ana, and this Reaper is going to do? Well, they're they see me. They're probably going to focus me. Right. They're going to pop turret. They're going to blow nade. They're going to blow sleep. They're going to try and shoot you. Right. So what does that mean for the poor Reinhardt? He won't have anything to help him so afterwards. So I wonder if what you're doing now is the better play. The only question is, can you survive it? And the answer is yes. If you what? If I use my DM properly. If you use your DM properly, sit there with your fat, stupid three seconds of matrix, and then even just duck behind the corner afterwards. That's why high ground's good too. It gives you cover. So for you, use your matrix. One, two, three, shoot a little bit, and then maybe just duck behind cover, right? And maybe that Ryan dies. What do you think? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Use it all. Use it all. Use it all. And there it is. Now, obviously, you guys might just straight up lose this fight anyway, but. Why? Why do you lose this fight? Look at the Reinhardt. He almost dies. He's no shield. He's 300 HP. He gets nanoed. He gets nanoed. So what do you think about your job? How do you think you've done this fight? Well, I, I remember what I did do this fight is I just kind of ignored the Rhine and, and tried to go for the trade. Right, right. I think so far you've played this one very well. I think you've done a really good job. Look at this, look at this, sleep, nade, bam, eaten. And this on is one HP. And you've eaten all the turret. And this, re look at, look at, they're in no position to follow up either. Do you see that? So I and I'm keep... also nanoed. Yeah, so let's see. Too much attention. Yeah. Do you see it? And, and I, could have, I could have made the decision a little quicker. Right, right. And the funny thing is, is look at the kill feed. What actually killed your cast? Bastion. Bastion. Now, now he was going to hit the pin either way, right? Um, but mm -hmm. for crying out loud, you know? It's the stuff behind that you're worried about. Now, as long as you can survive, you don't even need to get the kill here now. As long as we can bomb this and survive this, you're good to go. Bomb and survive. Run, 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 run. You need to be so? prioritizing your remac. You need to be prioritizing your remac. This is silly. Yeah. Um, you did a great job here. I mean, look at look at what's happening in the kill feed. You get the res. Ryan's isolated again. Reaper dies. And you've survived, or you should have survived. This right. is great diva play. This is great. You've ate all of the new cooldowns, no follow-up, forced the nano, prevented the follow-up on the shatter, and the Rhine and Reaper died anyway, and you died for it. Silly. It's just silly. You've done such a good job for this to be the way that you died. Should never, yeah. ever, ever have happened like that. Um, so, I, I can tell you what I was thinking there, is please. I was using the bomb as cover from the Bastion Sentry. Got it. Um, well, I didn't notice him pop out of sentry. Sure. Otherwise, I might have run well, for it. I, I think I understand your logic here, but if the Bastion stays to shoot you, 
he dies. He dies. Right? So you could probably just assume that you're going to be prior. So just maybe in this particular instance, you, you, it was a little bit of a misunderstanding, but just a good general rule whenever you possibly can. As soon as you drop that bomb, priority is on getting uncover. And try and drop the bomb, unless you're like launching it, try and drop the bomb where you have cover in general. Because as teams get better, they're gonna they're gonna punch punch you. Um, they're gonna light you up. Okay, matrix, matrix, matrix. Out, 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 out. Just play slow, play cover. Don't spend too much time here, though, right? This Reaper just sits behind Rhine Shield, pumps you full of lead. You're focused on those fire strikes. That's good. Whack them all. Where's the Reaper? I don't think I noticed him, but he's just to my left, isn't he? Oh no, he's back there. Whack-a-mole. He must. Did he TP over there? I'm guessing. He was on your left, and you didn't see him. So watch your yeah. left side of your screen. Yeah, he TP. And the thing is, is here the reason why this is so important is right now the game of Whack-a-mole. None of them are really playing aggressively anymore, right? They're all too far. Yeah, they're so then, they're backing up. They right. they have so, HP. So then except what for Ryan, but it's gonna get healed. Even if you didn't know about Reaper, what should be your immediate response right now? Uh, stabilize. Yes. Duck take, behind cover. And check. Make sure that we just keep the space that we what, have. What's going on? Where's Reaper? Is there anybody up top? Okay, maybe if there is, and if the Reaper's not here, let's say the Reaper's not here, what would you do? You duck behind cover, and then what? Um, just hold the space, maybe take high ground. Ah, this, this would be an opportunity to take the high ground. That and then I what would you do from here? Um, probably just poke at the the Ana mm -hmm. from a distance unless I see she gets low and mm -hmm. I can just dive her. And maybe even drop, right? And then fly back up again, right? Or fly back out again. All trying to create that same kind of isolation that you had with the Reinhardt earlier, right? Um, right. But we don't even have to think about that right now because that Reaper has made a mistake. He's way overextended while his team is completely out. If we're aware of him, he dies. He might not even... Uh, Disaster. I was too late. <laughs> and it's, and that's what it, and that's what it comes down to, right? If if you're, it's like the game. Like I said, I, I know it's probably killing me saying this again and again, but it's the whack a mole, right? You don't recognize it, you lose, right? You don't recognize it. If you punish him, he dies. We win. If you don't recognize it, uh, this Cassidy is like this hitbox is being weird. Um, uh, yeah, then then they win. So you do get the res. You don't want to be playing with Reinhardt shield. We need to get healed up first. Whack-a-mole, right? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> matrix, matrix. Chill, 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 chill. This is another situation where we're spending a lot of time on Rhine Shield because he's not using his shield very well, so we're getting away with it, but we're also losing a lot of shield in the process. What if you flew up from here and shot in Matrix and distracted from here? Right? Yeah, and actually, this was a point that I wanted to bring up where... You know, this this was this goes back to the noise thing, right? I think mm. if I go over here, that's really far away. Ryan can just walk on my team, right. right? And so that's why I didn't take this, but I guess I should have. Right, right. You are not the you you can. It's about return on investment. You doing damage to Reinhardt is pressure. It's good, okay. But mm -hmm. your hero is better designed to 1v1 and deal with squishy follow-up. And as we already saw earlier, the fastest way to kill a Reinhardt is to cut off his lifeblood, right? To cut off his Kiriko help, to distract the Bastion, to distract the Ana, to get a, an angle to where you can easier eat, nade, or sleep, or bait the nade and sleep onto yourself, right? So with you here, you're going to be able to do more than just shoot a Rhine shield. You're going to be able to completely have or re completely remove his healing, prevent all damage follow-up, and make it literally a 1v4. That's what we want. And the reason why we do that with D.Va is because that's what your hero is good at. It's what your hero is good at in a 1v1. If this was a Ryan versus Ryan 1v1, it would be a different story. Does that make sense? Yes. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. And this will work sometimes. Sometimes that Ryan will make a mistake. And you can see it right there. He's not doing a good job juggling his shield. And so we never really have had that problem. But 50% of the time, they will do just fine. And that's why you're stuck. That's why you're stuck. We need to find what's going to work 60% of the time, not 50% of the time. And we can right. see the real problem now. It's like, we can't do anything versus the Reinhardt now. 
right? We could at the very least stop this Bastion from doing it or kill the Kiriko or, or make sure there's no nade or no sleep or, or, or stop the Reaper, but we can't do anything. We're stuck shooting a Reinhardt who's nanoed with a shield. Right. Disaster. You know, it's also meaning that you're lower on Matrix and HP because you're constantly Matrixing just crap damage thrown at your direction. And so you don't even have full Matrix for a Death Blossom because you were too busy Matrixing Fire Strikes, right? Everybody wants to talk about, oh, Matrix Fire Strikes, you know, ma but, 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 but why? Why are you Matrixing Fire Strikes? <laughs> like, if there's nothing else to Matrix, sure, but, but why are you in that position in the first place, right? Um, I mean, this is fine. It's just you're, you're already down too. All right now we need to get the cover. Okay, let, let's let's watch one more fight. Do you have any, by the way, do you have any questions so far? No. Okay. We talked about a lot of stuff. Good. Good. Reapers out. No longer a threat. Find the next target. You can matrix these. Right now I'm looking for them. Yeah. 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 Well, what did he do? I think he got slept. I, I just don't understand Bastion players. I'm not gonna lie to you. I just, I, do, I really don't understand Bastion players at all. They're an anomaly to me. I, it's like, how do these humans? How do they even eat? Do they, do they feed themselves? Like, I mean, this. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, what, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. You're just a liability, right? You're a liability. This, this could be a big bomb. Oh, tragic. They actually, yeah. the, the people that the bomb should have killed actually had died beforehand, so that's tragic. Whack a mole, right? Chill, 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 chill. They get ready to punish that bastard. Go, 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 go. Yes. You were doing well. Let's not be super negative. What were some things that you were doing really well? Um, when I saw opportunities, I went for them. Mm hmm. Saw kill opportunities. You went for them. Mm hmm. Went for them. I actually don't think. Your micro missiles are too bad. So it, that your work there shows. So nice job. Okay. Yeah. What were some things that we need to improve? What are some skills that we need to develop? Um, being more comfortable with maybe leaving the front line if it's favorable for my team. Or not favorable for you because it's the same thing right the hard part about that is and i think it's the number one reason why we see so much frontlining diva is you it is not as satisfying flying onto a high ground and matrixing on a shots and doing ticky 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 damage and then hiding again and then matrixing and then shooting you don't do much damage playing like that until you actually commit right um right. but it's about all the attention that you're getting that matters so, so much more. It's like when you flank as Tracer and you go in the back line, your uptime, your downtime might, you might, might be kind of wonky, right? But the value that you get just through distracting, turning people's attention, baiting flankers, baiting, baiting cooldowns your way is really good. It's just not as satisfying as standing in front of a Ryan Shield and shh, 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 you know, over and over and over again, right? Um, okay, so more comfortable with leaving front line when it's favorable for your team and if not favorable for you, what else do you need to improve on? What's the skill we need to develop? Maybe it's something that's like I'm decent at, but could be better at is just awareness of where my team is at all times. Mm, mm, mm. Why is that important? Well, because that's what informs the decision of where opportunities lie, if my team needs peel or not, um, and also how aggressive I can be. And maybe another thing I can work on is not taking unnecessary damage. Um, I do have a mindset a little bit of soaking up damage to help feed my Ana ult charge, which maybe isn't always the best thing to do. No, no, not no much true. Very rarely, very rarely is that the case. If they're close to a support ult, sure, totally fine. But the majority of the time, no. It's going to put undue pressure on your supports and probably encourage you to play in a position or a, a, a style that doesn't complement you, as we've already seen. <clears throat> I want you to try and do your best to stress test and experiment with positioning and how you play around the map. 
and how you see opportunities. Now, what I'm going to ask you is one more question. We didn't talk a lick about Zarya, but we gave you every tool that you need to play with versus Zarya. How are you? Remember, it's the 1v1s and the whack a mole. How are you in the 1v1 versus Zarya? Horrible. Horrible. So then, what should be your number one goal then? Is looking for Zarya to be far enough away from her team that I can apply pressure to the rest of her team and let my right. team deal with the Zarya. Right, right, right. And let's put it this way if they're all clumped up in a giant hunk and they refuse to take any off angles, refuse to give you opportunities to split off and control space, then you, what do you do? Um, count bubbles. <laughs> sure. How about this one? You take an off angle, you take, because they're not on any off angles, you take the entire map, you hard flank, and then you drop on their back line. And the Zarya turns around and beams you, right? But it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? As long as your team can follow up, it doesn't matter. Zarya can't kill you very fast. It's just not a very favorable 1v1. That's all, right? So you take the favorable 1v1 on a different t target. I don't care if Zarya's beaming me, as long as I'm shooting something that's more valuable than shooting a Zarya, right? If you force her bubbles by doing that, then you fly up. And then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. And she's going to run out of bubbles faster than you're going to run out of HP if you play it well. So, so here would be my question in that scenario. I'm imagining I'm solo queuing. I don't have coordination with my team. You don't need coordination with your team. You just need to know what, what I doing. What I will notice is that if I'm not on the front line, my team will not push up. Okay. If I'm doing a flank, <clears throat> they'll back up. Okay, okay. So maybe start front line to give them that little bit of encouragement, then look for an opportunity to take. And we're not talking hard flanking. I, I know I said hard flank, but it's not necessary that you do that. You just maybe take a little bit of damage, put a little bit of pressure, maybe force out a bubble, let your team walk up a little bit, then try and split and take an angle on their DPS. And okay. that will not work in lower ranks 40% of the time because your teammates are going to be cowards and not understand but they don't have to understand to get value out of that 60% of the time. And that's what we're aiming for. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. And that, that's what we need to make. We need to make adjustments that maybe not always work, right? But that more often than not are objectively the good play. And that's why I'm here, because I can tell you what objectively is going to work, regardless of your rank. It won't always work, but it is objectively the correct play. And if you practice that skill overwhelmingly over a period of time, you will rank up. Remember, it measures how good you are over 100 games or 1,000 games, right? Not one game. So don't take it too much to heart.